Hello everyone and welcome to It's Your Season Life, where we are discovering and living life at any age. I'm Lisa Boson. I'm here to introduce you to people like you and me who have rediscovered themselves, stretched their abilities, and to me, kept their light under a bushel basket. I hear their stories and think, wow, that is so cool. These are ordinary people doing the extraordinary. So what are we doing? Well, you know how you'd love to hear your peers succeed, get inspired by those who just try? That's us. That's it's your season dot life. Don't forget to follow us on our website, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm there sharing weekly updates and, of course, what's in season, be it people, food, feelings, and nature. So let's get started. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of It's Your Season. Life podcast series. It is Tuesday, May the 4th, and I have a super special guest for you today. Her name is Wendy McMillan. Wendy is uh, owner, creator of the Happy Apple Natural Kitchen, and well, she found me, and I discovered her, and here we are today. She found me. She's a writer, and I'm a beekeeper, and she was doing an article on beekeeping. And then as we worked through the interview process, we had so much in common. I wanted to keep her in my circle, and she's in my circle, in my universe, and she is with us today. So welcome, Wendy. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I feel like I'm throwing off the, I hope I don't throw off the momentum, but I just realized that I can't do this podcast without you without saying may the fourth be with you. (laughs) I love that. I love it. You just hit me. Oh, it's May the 4th as I heard you introduce (laughs) me. I've been sending Yoda memes to people all through the day, but I don't oh. like the connection. Oh, I totally. But it does seem like we did have a cosmic kind of connection, didn't we, when it, we connected? It really did. I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we have so much in common. And and it was just, just so magical. And I just, I love just even getting to know you better. So we have some common things. One of them is obviously food. Food, but then it goes deeper than that. That of kind mm-hmm. of how, what are how we got to where we we are today on May fourth, twenty twenty one. So um, cut, so I'm going to let you go first and tell us about Happy Apple Natural Kitchen. Now I have to jump in and tell people also you have a lot of followers on Instagram. This oh. is no small feat. So I want to brag on you on that. That but is very kind. Yeah. So, so let's hear about Happy Apple Natural Kitchen. Blog. Yeah. You know, I won't take us back. To, well, we probably will end up going way back um, just when we talk about our journeys through food. But when it comes to the actual food blog, which really, I mean, it's not monetized. It's a passion. But I do do recipe development um, as part of my freelance work and a lot of my writing has centered on and food and nutrition. And um, I think there have been these two continuous threads through my life, back to being a little girl. <laughs> you know, I, I think I always just knew I was drawn to being a, a writer. And it felt like one of those out there pie in the sky dreams. And often it still can feel like that. As, as you know, it's a tenuous kind of, kind of world. It's, it can be scrappy, right? Right, but right. But I also had that giving instinct I wanted, craved that, that secure, meaningful, I'm contributing to the world identity. And I just thought, well, I'll probably be also a teacher. And I did end up pursuing teaching, which is so rewarding. Um, no regrets, but I did starve myself as a writer during the time I was teaching, especially as a new teacher, you know, when it's, it's um it's grueling because we kind of idealize as a society what teaching is about even despite our education and our student teaching and sort of imagine having all these pockets of time for many different things and imagining summers off or uh, you know you know <laughs> what we sometimes do we romanticize mm-hmm. but i i took this healing year Um, My husband and I were having some other struggles with fertility, and I was just struggling. And I took this year where I just really wanted, with his 
great support. It was really wonderful. Um, I wanted to focus on health and I did acupuncture. I went to part-time teaching. I started writing and putting out pitches and one of the, some of the jobs that I, I did um, just naturally involved food. And I had this one really kind editor who is a friend um, just say, you know, you're really good at this. She kind of threw recipe development at me. She she was in a bind. She had somebody who was writing, who had um, accepted some assignments, bail out on her, and she needed these articles turned around, and she took a chance on me. And she just said, could you do this, and could you include recipes? And it kind of, I, I loved it. You know, I just felt, I'm not somebody who likes to put myself out there. I always feel like, you and I have talked about, I wanted that extra credibility, like, oh, I didn't study to be a chef, I didn't study nutrition, but I really enjoyed it, and I, I was able to self-teach, and mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, I'm going to just keep doing this no matter what kind of gigs I get. So, And also, I found that in creating this blog, I could also just infuse, it was like journaling, you know, healthy, like meditation, and I, I started making it a little bit more personal, but also share recipes. And it's it's really gone through different phases. And now I need to do some more work on it again because we've realized that, like, for instance, you can't subscribe on the website right now. I'm not sure why that is. And my first original blog, it was much more um, personal diary. And then I hit that point where I realized, ooh, this is a lot to be putting out into the ether. You know, you know you're putting it out there, but you don't always realize that anybody can actually access it. So so I've just gone through different periods of reevaluating and figuring out that balance of how much do I want this for my own personal highlight reel, uh -huh. you know, and how much <laughs> is it for this cleansing process? And then also just mostly it's been an archive for me to go back to because I love playing with recipes and I, I think everybody should get to just use recipes as a guide and then explore but I also want to record what worked and you know I absolutely I absolutely do understand that especially I love your idea of recipes as a guide um you know for me when I write recipes or people say oh I want that recipe and and it, it comes so naturally that if I have to sit down and really write it as a recipe and if it doesn't come out exactly right for them, you know, I tend to worry a little bit because we all have, you know, thousands of taste buds that are picking up different sensations and then the whole uh, the olfactory sense that goes into uh, cooking and, and a recipe that, that it works for me. But again, it's a guideline. Um, so, and then, and tell me how many, how many years now have you been a recipe developer and have had this presence on the web? Hmm. You know, it's actually been longer than I realized. <laughs> I think, so that year that, that sort of soulful, mm -hmm. let's try and, um, it was really aimed at letting go of stress and it, with the goal of um, maybe increasing fertility and figuring out what was going on with that. Uh -huh. and But as a result of that year, so many unexpected things kind of transpired. And so it, it was jumpy. Maybe like um, I think my first actual article with recipes, it, was, it came my way in 2008. And that is when I started the blog. Um, and I did do, I did recipes for Natural Solutions, um, a magazine that isn't really operating anymore for a uh -huh. couple of years. And then I got some very consistent work. Gosh, when was this? <laughs> it was around <laughs> when my son was first born and he's now seven. Um, and so that was about a year and a half. Re these contracts, they've been, they last for a while. You know, and then something mm -hmm. new comes along. I did a little bit for Medhava Sweeteners. Um, and right now I do some steady work for this wonderful B Corps in Boulder called Organic India. They have a lot of 
health and wellness supplements and tea infusions and it's really right up my alley everything about the company ethos and the type of products they use so but throughout it all I just kind of infused I just tried to stay committed to my own experiments as well <laughs> just to keep you know just to keep the creativity going and, sure. work on projects. and it helps it's a great platform for fine-tuning or improving photography too and you know, just, yeah, it feels like it's all developing different areas of the brain, right? Mm -hmm. I was listening to, um, I don't know if you listened to Hidden Brain, but I love the Hidden Brain podcast. And he was, Ooh, no. into this. I'm not sure how far behind I am on his podcast, but it was about, you know, it's, we have this right and left side of our brain and we're, we're some of us may have more dominant, but it's not kind of the old school of, oh, well, I'm left and you're right. I'm creative, you're analytical. There's things that, that pull it to get, pull, use both sides of the brain. Yeah. And the finished product is kind of like the master. You know, we, you see there, and I do too when I cook, is you, you envision the final product, but then you've got to kind of put the analytics on the backside to make yeah. it happen. Definitely. So I'm looking at your website right now. I just want to read mm -hmm. this. You you write so beautifully about food, and it says, you know, food, I'm giving a little bit of a cliff note, but I need to start somewhere. Um, food mm -hmm. is, it's fuel. It's, I love the word sustenance. It's a beautiful and powerful gift. It's communion and community. It's a means to health, and it's meant to be shared. And then you go, go forward and you say, I love experimenting in the kitchen. I love the bright colors, varied textures, and crisp sounds of produce on the cutting board. I love to bake, to gift from the heart. Not just give from the heart, but gift from the heart. And to explore ways of being healthfully creative and economical. I, I, that is just so beautiful to me. Um, Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I, I love the sounds of produce. And... Um, the whole preparation piece of it is uh, is something that gets lost sometimes when uh, when we're not we're using you know I'm not saying I don't use bag lettuce and stuff when I need to but the whole preparation piece is so artful and so poetic. So, what are some of your favorite things that you enjoy preparing? Oh, <laughs> goodness. Um, you know, well, we are plant-based. We are vegan, mm -hmm. uh, mostly. Mm -hmm. and sometimes when you're raising a child, they're, you know, I think the tradition mm -hmm. um, that we've been raised with can cause moments, glimmers of self-doubt where you wonder, oh, I just don't want to make sure I prescribe anything for him. Um, but interestingly enough, I know I'm not answering your question directly right now, but since I'm taking this detour, I might as well <laughs> follow it through. Our son at seven is probably the most fervent vegan <laughs> in the family. I mean, he just, he loves animals and he's so compassionate and I think he's just so attuned to where our food comes from, which I love. Um, so anything with Plants. But I do really love baking. It is definitely like you were actually reading from my book. <laughs> there is something that's so nurturing and so heartfelt about it, even though it can carry with it, especially now, all these connotations. We have to be careful. People have triggers and people have, there are lots of allergies and sensitivities, so, and different tastes, palates. And I realize that having gone so far into trying to live. Um, you know, refined sugar-free and healthfully, my palate is different <laughs> than many. So something that I find really sweetly satisfying, for instance, might just seem, eh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to someone. But I do really, I, I feel like you just, there's just joy parceled into like a cupcake, for instance. Or, you know, just energy bites that look like truffles. I've been doing a lot of those lately. Some uh, medjool dates with a little bit of cinnamon and almond butter and rolled in sesame seeds and you know turmeric and it's, it's fresh ginger it's just like they look like these very neat packages <laughs> and like they just have just such a satisfying soft like, sweetness to them 
But that, it's, I don't know, anything, anything that's pretty. I like prettying it up or just, or comforting, like a good shepherd's pie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anything that is inviting. Yeah. Well, we eat with our eyes. Mm -hmm. And, and certainly with plant-based cooking, it's, it can be, you can go both ways with it. You can just, uh, veganize the standard American diet, or you can go full in and make just gorgeous, beautiful dishes, even desserts. And that's, what's exciting for me too, about your, yes. what you yeah. do is because, um, we, I have a repertoire of about, you know, 10 things that I go f to for mm -hmm. desserts and we don't have them very often anymore. So it's nice to find someone yeah. who has really embraced just the, the, a little dessert. It's a treat. It's, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a little, it shouldn't be so taboo. It, yeah. shouldn't give us, it shouldn't come ladled with guilt, but on the other, uh, on that same train of thought, I think when it comes to preparation, there are two sides to it. I both really love the way we can bring love in to preparation. I think that a lot of the things, actually there's someone I should connect you with who also loves podcasting. Um, she has a podcast that's aimed at um, kind of combating loneliness, the loneliness epidemic and, and through friendship, through meaningful friendship. But in one of her episodes, she said something that really stuck with me, which is I try to do everything with love, whether I'm doing the dishes or clean the house, you know, I try to put love into it. And that really was very calming. So I really like to think about preparation as it can come across as drudgery sometimes. Like I just have to do this. I have to squeeze it in and, and you kind of taste the difference. And even if I'm busy, if I can think about this lovingly, it feels good. So, but with that in mind and the fact that life is just busy, sometimes I feel like my favorite things to prepare are those sort of cheating meals. You know, the ones where you can throw everything in the slow cooker and you just know those sweet potatoes are going to taste so silky by the end of the day and the spices you throw in are going to do their magic and a can of coconut milk is going to transform it into tasting like it has these layers of effort that didn't actually have to go in. Do you find that too? I do. I, you know, just having, you know, a, a, little, a little repertoire of the go-tos that, you know, if I'm busy, I can do. And it, I know it's going to come out really, I, I can't articulate it quite as well as you do. Oh, <laughs> but, yes, you do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that it's just, it's, it's, it's flavorful. It has layers of flavor. It has different textures. And um, mine tend to go more toward uh, the bowl um Mm. the bowl of realm of things where I can take a yes. grain and a veg and a bean and a fruit and too. some two minute shallots in the microwave to crisp them up and some mm -hmm. nutritional yeast with nuts. And, and I yes. can, I can just pull that together and it has just a lot of elements in it that, um, that I can just sit and, or my husband, and I can just sit and enjoy and eat and, it wasn't overly time consuming. It's mm -hmm. uh, although my favorite is twelve minutes. The the potatoes in a in a crock in a instant pot. I didn't think I would be cooker. such an. In, I yeah. know I did not think they I would be. They are great. They are great. And so, I think it's uh, it can go. You know, it's good to have things we can go to when we're busy. And then there's times it's nice to have yeah. that Just meditative experience elegant. of yes. oh, you know taking pause and cutting up some bell peppers and <laughs> just I uh, love that with the bowl too though you're right. I just love how the same ingredients can just be elevated you know just like it's the salad with grains or you yeah. just change up the dressing and it's like wow I could have this every night I just but it, it transforms into something different every night just because I varied these flavors yeah. or the positioning even on the plate or in the bowl yeah and uh so it kind of it varies um but it's just uh, nice to have those comforting things to go to that are easy, but also um, you can, like you said, elevate them, change well, up the cuisine that, a little bit, you know. Speaking of that, I think that this is a good spot where I should throw you a plug because <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing 
and making a lot of your go-to dishes with your new book. Oh, yeah. Congratulations I, on well, that coming to fruition. It looks amazing. Well, thank you. It was, uh, yeah, it was kind of crazy how that came into being. That was supposed to be a uh, uh, just a regular cookbook, you know, when I started working on it three or four years ago. And uh, it was going to have meat and cheese and dairy and fish and lamb and all the good stuff that, you know, the agriculture here, the uh, animal agriculture, and then also about the farmer's markets. And I started working on that. And then when my husband and I went plant-based, um, it transformed and kept moving. And I had to learn how to, we've only been plant-based for a little over two years, um, but last year I just made these even more discoveries on the farmer's markets here and how the um, vendors were flexing during the pandemic. And I still got this amazing produce <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and fruits. And um, yeah, and then so it just kept evolving and kept evolving. And, and all of a sudden it became 100 recipes and with seasons and... Um, uh, trying to bring in technique um, so people learn multiple techniques throughout the cookbook. Yeah, and and really celebrating Colorado and all yeah. the wonderful, i got to brag about it, we have a lot of goodness mm -hmm. here in, on the Front Range. I did mention the Western Slope and, and some other areas uh, for... The produce there that specialized for those areas but then it, it wound up being kind of a history book some history buff and <laughs> and then mm -hmm. 500 photos with with uh, just everything from produce to the mountains so yeah thanks i'm i'm super excited that it's out there it was a a, a labor of love but also hopefully something you know people can use and enjoy and have a virtual visit to Colorado and learn how to cook so well, I definitely want to buy it and uh, you have inspired me when we first talked after separately from talking or from corresponding about beekeeping um uh, you talked to me about the forks over knives course that you took yes yes and I definitely am planning, I, I am planning on doing that. I just, like we were talking about, just having that extra structure, even though you know that you've, you've learned a lot and you're confident in your skills, it's just nice to have that other perspective, a different kind of mentor. So I'm looking forward to that. And I do hope to put together a cookbook sometime too. I don't know if you knew a, a teaching teammate and dear friend of mine and I, did actually self-publish a family resource cookbook. It was called Plot to Plate, Grow, Cook, Create. And we I think we sold maybe 100 copies to some friends. And I have a stack of like 30 in my basement. But I, you know, it was before we were, our family was fully plant-based. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some dairy sprinkled in, um, which actually, we in, are in such a great time for choosing to be dairy-free or gluten-free or Whatever you need to avoid right now, we can. It's really easy to do it flavorfully without yeah. feeling deprived, without creating like that sense of deprivation, isn't it? It but is. But it was seasonal and has activities. So looking back, I feel like, wow, that was such a an important process for me, and it was a a vision that I had. But I really would like to go back and do something like that better. You know, I feel like that was kind of a stepping stone, a learning process. Oh, sure, sure. Um, yeah, well, that's, this is your second book too, right? Yeah, so the first one I look at, that. yeah, I look at the first one. I was, uh, my husband, it was, it, my husband and I weren't plant-based yet, but the, uh, we had a lot of health issues and, or not we did, our family did. So, you know, we were all about cruciferous vegetables. My, um, I don't want to bore the audience too much with my stories, but uh, but you know when you, when you have a lot of pancreatic cancer in your family, your radar goes mm -hmm. up a little bit. So yeah. and uh, but anyway, so I had my first cookbook was twenty one days of super uh, sweet kale. Let me think about twenty one days of sweet kale yeah, salad right? mix. Right? <laughs> yeah, it was the sweet <laughs> kale salad mix you get at Costco, and oh. um, but it was just so easy because my husband and I were working full-time still and 
it was, it was like, how are we going to get cruciferous vegetables in, you know? So, Mm -hmm. um, I, I just started creating recipes thinking I'm going to put it in every cuisine and I'm going to wrap it and I'm going to put it in a stew and I'm going to put it in cold cannon and I'm going to put it in a Spanish recipe and, um, to show others that, you know, it's, it, it's not cumbersome. You can add vegetables um, and cruciferous vegetables, which, you know, are not everybody's cup of tea. But there's a lot in that grouping of cruciferous vegetables. And, and make it fun and interesting and have some different, different ways to, to enjoy those vegetables. So, yeah, that was my yeah. first one. Um, and I revised it, and it was paperback. And it was, you know, if I could go back and do that one again, I may go back and do a third revision on it now that I have some even more skills. But uh, yeah, that was, I was, it was just, I wanted to get it out there. It was like, you know, it's been so good for us, and people were asking us what we, what we, how we do it. And, um, and again, we weren't quite plant based, we were probably more on the vegetarian side by then. Um, but still eating, you know, I'm from Texas, you know, we ate barbecue. We, <laughs> we mm-hmm. ate, that's what you do in Texas and eat a lot of meat. And so you have to, we were weaning at that time. So yeah, that was, uh, that one, that one is done. I, I still use a, a lot of those recipes for my day in quick meals when I need something quick and then it's, it's plant-based. So if you're, how, what are your thoughts if we take a little dive into, kind of, and we go as deep as we want on, mm-hmm. I'm going to pass the baton back to you. <laughs> and Some talk, of the more complex sides yeah, of, 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 of the food and relationships. Yeah. Is that where you're going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, guessing. But. <laughs> no, <anyway. laughs> um, just, you know, people, you know, plant-based is, is getting more mainstream. It's not completely mainstream, and there's variations mm-hmm. on a theme of it. Would you mind sharing how kind of the process of how you did it? Maybe not the reason why you did it so much, but maybe the process. I can share any of it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then, you know, it helps people go, well, you know, maybe I can add more veg, you know. Sure. Yeah. um, So I guess maybe I, I I might have to flip that and go a little bit into some of the reasons. Um, because I guess they're so intertwined, aren't they? The reasons and the process, the goal. Mm-hmm. So is the goal that you don't feel it, you don't want to eat animals? Is the goal that you do want to bring more plants in? I think it's just sort of, there's this poem by Adrian Rich that um, has this line in it where if you turn the angle of the light just a little bit, it completely changes the room. And I feel like the way we approach food it's so fragile sometimes it's so delicate just the slightest shift can be can open up these huge worlds and let you breathe and make it easier or it can also you know when we dive too far in it can also create an obsessiveness Mm -hmm. or a fear or shame I mean food is so universal and it's such a connector and it's so emotional, isn't it? There are so many ties Mm -hmm. that sometimes it's hard to even really see kind of forest for the trees or it's, it's hard to know what are, what is my intention here? What is the motivator? I remember even as a child at eight years old, I, one day we were eating hamburgers and they were a little pink and I remember all of a sudden it just dawned on me with this like new clarity, like just smack in the face ooh, we're eating cow, and that really bothers me, and I just had this vision of the cow jumping over the moon, like this, we have this, these pastoral images, and then wham, it got shot down, <laughs> I told my parents, like, we're eating cow, and they just looked at me, and my mom, who was ever pragmatic, but had her own language of food, like, that was her love language, she was like, yep, <laughs> that's how it is, and they definitely did not want to indulge my desire growing up to be, like here and there, fleeting desires to be vegetarian. But I went through a lot of different waves um, where food was a source of shame and fear. And I did develop disordered eating all around two complex <laughs> issues, you know, just to do with, the, it's always about who we are in, in terms of that core, isn't it? Our, mm-hmm. We're sort of starving our inner chil- children sometimes or, or overfeeding or oversaturating 
Um, and food ended up being related to all of that. And through the years, just going through my own personal struggles and having food and my relationship to food tied in, finally emerged through knowledge, through just doing a lot of, and just in, in reading and soul searching on various topics, including nutrition and health, but also, um, you know, being female or being um, multiracial or, or different um, aspects of just coming of age, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Growing and finding your place in the world. And, and then through the um, questions with fertility as well, I just, one thing that really hooked my husband and I, we were long time, long distance runners. And I think that we got really intrigued by this vegan movement um, that was happening with ultra athletes in particular, but we were intrigued by, for health reasons. We read the, the China study mm -hmm. and we watched the documentaries that, you know, the typical ones that people watch and the, like forks over knives. And we found it super compelling and just tried to ease into it and then found ourselves just um, being more and more drawn in environmentally. Like what kept us sticking to it was, well, fun and joy and enjoyment for me. Just like I just really loved cooking with plants and I didn't ever really enjoy cooking with me. And as I'm talking, I really want to make it clear too that there's no judgment. I think that veganism carries this activism component and it can make it hard to come to the table with people with different choices sometimes because we assume others assumptions about you know about mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and I think sometimes it, when it comes to a vegan being at the table people might automatically feel automatically well I am repeating that word sorry and <laughs> judge <laughs> when that's that's really at least for me that's not the case I think we all have our own journeys we all find our different ways to contribute and define what's right for us and our bodies are such intricate organisms, of course it makes sense that the way we nurture and nourish them is going to be different, you know, and even if, but we can all agree, I think, on sort of tenets mm -hmm. <laughs> of, of living healthfully, and that's, you know, you give your body movement, and you try to eat whole foods, you try to not veer too much into um, the land of the processed, or over sugar and or emotional eating even when your food is cooked and shared with emotion that can be really hard but in terms of actually following through what you first asked with the process of putting in more plants when you when you go kind of cold turkey and all you have to eat are plants it, it's pretty easy <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> but i mean you just you explore the lentils and the quinoa and the different i i think you start finding things that are, you know, what's quote unquote more meaty, if it's portobello mushrooms or, or if it is some of the products, like I really love, I love tofu and I love making bacon out of tempeh. Mm -hmm. It's not bacon, but I guess it's easier for me because I never <clears throat> liked those originals. I never liked bacon and it was harder for my husband because he loved his sausages and his, his, like he's from England and you know, it's the meat pies and, mm. but he's, Bangers and mash, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. So if sometimes you have the field sausages mm -hmm. with the mash and like they are close, mm -hmm. then that's really, I think that's something to celebrate and enjoy that you can do that. Mm -hmm. But I also understand the point of view that why not just go for the original thing just more sparingly too. Yeah, yeah. There's Does that a... help at all with your question though, Lisa? I think I rambled a whole bunch <laughs> Do you, do you want to know anything specific about like what do you put on the plate? Uh, no, it was uh, what I what I didn't know is uh, like I, I know we have different. We're both in the same place, but we mm -hmm. took different journeys to get there. So it's always good for people to hear. It doesn't have to be black or white. It doesn't have to be all in. I think there's a place for everyone at the plant table. And, yes. um, and that, and that's really what I was hearing is, and, uh, I, I think when we do go into, well, it's, you know, 
the vegan way or the no way, and, mm-hmm. and, and then then we get into to, um, to a little bit of trouble of, of people even considering it. Uh, yeah, it's a turn off. Consider it's it? a turn off. It's a you terrible. Put people on the defensive. Yeah, and and what you want them to do is to, or at least for me, the nebulous you, you know, <laughs> out there in the world, <laughs> um, is, you know, great if you want to go all in and do the whole foods, no salt, no oil, no sugar, no kind of anything and that's fine mm-hmm. you know that that methodology is out there and and then I loved this new term out there you may have heard it called plant rich so we've gone from yeah. plant mm-hmm. I love plant rich yes, uh, meals and it just makes a lot of sense doesn't it yeah it's very accessible that concept yeah and um so you know, some people do it, like you said, for health, and others do it for the environment, and others do it for animal welfare, and um, there's probably several more that I haven't rattled off, because my mind went blank, but, uh, you know, there's different reasons that people do it, and varying degrees on how they want to have a more of a plant forward, there's lots of names out there for it, plus vegan um, uh, lifestyle. You know what I think is so hard sometimes because we really want to be open and embracing and accepting of everyone's different choices and yet food is, it is so natural to want to share and it, like you expressed earlier with your recipes, we all have varied tastes and people might have subtle differences in the way they prepare something or they might have to put in a little swap or have a little, to be a little short on an ingredient. So it shouldn't, we, we shouldn't take it personally when somebody doesn't like our food, but it feels so personal. Yeah. It's just you, because you do, you pour so much of yourself and, and it's meant to be something that you gave of yourself. So we have to find that balance and also just kind of, sometimes I, I have backed off from giving somebody a gift of food, even though that's been my, that's my natural instinct. It's how I was raised. I mean, you knew <laughs> my mom was happy with you or not by what was in the oven or not. <laughs> you knew if your friends were approved of or not by whether or not there were cooking smells wafting in the kitchen or if it was pretty cold and, you know, mm-hmm. dark. So sometimes if somebody's in need and I want to help, but I think, oh my gosh, there are all these allergies. I almost feel like I might offend them, you know, or, and you just, you don't, you don't even want their skill on the receiving side too, where you think, oh, this was made with such loving intention, but I can't eat this, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it, it is, it creates a greater intimacy around it, around, we want to be able to break bread <laughs> together, <laughs> but maybe the potluck is the way to go until you actually know that safe circle of, or comfort level of, hey, here, here are the things we can all enjoy together. Or maybe with these people, we do, you know, go out when, when we can go out, you know, or, or just everybody bring your own and, and just relax about it. Yeah, we have, uh, we've kind of found kind of both ways. It's, you know, potluck works. Um, we actually went to a barbecue the other night and, uh, and it worked out beautifully because the, the, there were several people with varying, there were 30 people there on an outdoor event, by the way, and, uh, but uh, several people with varying types of food preferences, and so they grilled uh, meat, but then we all brought, almost everyone brought a beautiful fully by luck no one asked but all the sides were just beautiful plant-based and uh it was something we could all eat and enjoy and then we all brought our own little if we wanted something that looked like something grilled so our plate looked like everyone else's that's fine it was just it was a very understanding group and as it was a mixed group because they were uh mediterranean and plant-based and standard american and everything in between on that so uh, that we all have, there's going to be differences in how we eat and until you can kind of get to know someone well enough and figure out how to, uh, you know, discover how to, everybody can be at the table and enjoy kind of the same meal or relatively the same meal together. Yeah, there's a, 
there's there's a lot more patience with it, I think. Yes, and that is so key, patience. It's as simple as that, isn't it? I mean, just basic respect. Because we're in a time where so much is supercharged with yeah. such intensity. You know, it used to be, okay, avoid politics and religion. But now, I mean, politics alone has just sort of spread to envelop so yeah. much. I mean, it's bled into everything down to food choices, down to education, down to parenting, travel, you know, ways of gathering. It, there's just a, there's a rawness that we just have to tiptoe around and, and get through. And I think there's a way to approach it. Like I, I really appreciated, there's a, there were three couples and we would get together and, but we hadn't been together in a while after we went plant-based and Finally, one of them, I mean, you know, it takes a while to figure out how to ask a question um, to get to un- for understanding. And so she called me, or I can't remember, we were at a party, and she pulled me aside, or she called me, or what. She said, you know, we want to be with you guys so much, but we don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And and that just... That and was she, really great that she did that. I know. She and she out there like that. Yeah, and I said, you know what, we can... No one has to eat plant-based with us when we're plant-based. You know, we can do a potluck. We can go out to a restaurant that has a little bit of everything for everyone. And But then what happened, and it really made me feel good, they were like, well, we want to try it, but we don't know what to do. (laughs) So so it evolved, and it wound up being a wonderful evening, and they were just surprised how colorful the dinner Mm -hmm. was and all the things they could do with hearts of palm and some things they'd never, some vegetables they'd never used before. And it wound up being just a wonderful evening, but it meant so much to me that someone would say, we want to be with you, but but we don't know how to do it. I'm so, okay, well, let's yeah. figure it out, you know. We, before the pandemic, we had some friends, invited some friends who are live up near you, actually, for just a very casual, small vegan Thanksgiving. We None of us had um, family around. My husband's overseas. My family is on either coast. Um and it was really sweet because they were excited about it and a little nervous and they asked would it be okay if we bring our own turkey and I thought of course please you know I want it to be festive for everybody and then they ended up really enjoying and why do you take pictures it was like a museum (laughs) you know at this tableau and sometimes it's funny Lisa because as we're talking you know as you've repeated a couple of times that you're fairly newly plant-based in a relative it's all relative isn't it Mm -hmm. and I guess we've been you know fully I've been fully vegan for about eight years now almost but um but I still am okay you know I think like you said when we box each other or ourselves in that's that's where the danger is I mean sometimes I think you keep grasp of the big picture but sometime if I'm going to have a little bite of somebody's prepared sustainably sourced fish you know i i'm not gonna kill myself over i there are cities um i walter longo have you heard that name he wrote the longevity diet oh yes yes and yes it was we heard him speak on a podcast and it was very balanced i mean it was just reinforcing the value of plant rich mm-hmm. but it was also saying as we age you know when our knees change he's like maybe add in a little fish or egg and you could tell that the host um, was a little uncomfortable because his platform was being vegan and sort of wanted to steer those comments away. But I also really admired that honesty, too, because, like, we ask each other to tick off boxes to create our identity too much. And I think identity and, mm-hmm. exp- like, experience, they're fluid and evolving, right? And they're multifaceted. Mm-hmm. Like, when why should we be pared down why should we have to pick are you a teacher or are you a writer are you you know are you an extrovert or are you an introvert because that that shifts and that's all the surrounding factors like who would have thought i am shy (laughs) that i'd be speaking to you on this podcast that is technically could be really talking to anybody right but it's completely comfortable in our bubble here oh it's (laughs) it's just just lovely you've uh, you've just shared so much and i just love the way you articulate 
the relationship between food and ourselves and and you know how it's a reflection of ourselves and but we continue to transform and and um hopefully we continue to transform anyway um but uh but not oh, to box or doing, Lisa with that with the transformative like thriving just keeping on thriving just yeah just That's keep what on your website says to me yeah it's uh it's it's, it's ever evolving and it, and and this is the season for us to be healthy and if that means eating a lot more plants and you know if i have a bite of a little bite of something every now and then i'm not going to beat myself up yes. over it i'm going to be overall in a in a healthy sphere and um and and and, and enjoying it's really about enjoying nature you had mentioned earlier yes. that um you know when you do this well then it leads to this and 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 certainly that was also with the beekeeping, because then once you're in, you study beekeeping, then you study native bees, then you study pollination, yes. then you study agriculture. And you have this affinity, <laughs> don't you, for them? Like something that people might, yeah. I mean, obviously right now we all really vastly, there's this growing awareness of why we need the bees with colony yeah. crops and the appreciation, but, but seeing, learning from you and your perspective, like there's a kinship, there's a friendship, there's sort of that... You know, it's just like you can look up in the trees and just see their leaves rustling and it's the most healing thing. It is. When you feel that interconnectedness. Yeah. And so I, I think for us, it's that is, that's kind of it kept it kept rolling. It went from health to yeah. the environment to nature to connecting at this very earthy level that yeah. I, I never would have thought feeling. we would have done. Yeah. 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 Well, I have to ask you before we conclude, given that yep, again, yes. I do want to make sure that I'm yes. not making this seem like <laughs> I don't, I'm going, what I'm going to say is going to sound hypocritical because it could be construed as laying guilt. <laughs> because like, I just like, well, this is the way, but for I, me, it is 45 I'm, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am curious about, no, no, no. It's um, with, when you did go plant-based, what was the biggest health, change like what what made the what did you feel did you feel a revitalized energy or was it subtle or did you just mentally know like this is what we need to do for my you know my husband had cancer and we're going to move forward this way and it just felt good um yeah so in one minute or less he was he wanted to go 100 percent, and i i went kind of kicking and screaming um and so but it's only because i didn't know it, he wanted to do it overnight, and I, I'm, I'm, I am a, oh, there's a change management term, a slow adopter, I guess is what you call me, and and I needed time, but I need to process. Yeah, things. I needed <laughs> time. It was a, it was a lot to process. I mean, when they say stage four, it's 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 significant. I mean, mm-hmm. he's doing well now, yeah. very well, but you know, it was a lot to process at the time, but. What eventually I found one, I did lose weight, uh, but I think the biggest thing was how much energy I was beginning to experience mm. and the lack of sluggishness and uh, and then other um, GI symptoms that, and like, okay, I don't t- tag them at anymore because I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not eating eight ounces of meat. Mm. Um and a lot of fat, animal fat, but it was it was more the energy, and then it just continued to evolve on this whole. How did how have I not been doing this before? As you know, how, how why haven't I done this? I I know better. I know I knew in my heart. I worked cardiac and pulmonary rehab. I worked in open heart recovery. I knew what you know vessels look like. Um. But I, I, it just kept evolving, and it, it was more just, it's like looking at food now is not just something to put on the plate, but really as energy, kind of like when mm-hmm. I feed my bees pollen and sugar water and, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and a, little bit of ta- a little bit of thyme oil and some different things. I'm feeding, I'm nurturing them, and I never really for decades had not really thought of as being nurturing like nutrition 
So, mm. yeah, and energy. Like, wow, where did all this energy come from? Yeah. <laughs> so, I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, we are at, I promised you, 45 minutes, and mm-hmm. we went over just a I little bit. I feel like we just, <laughs> we just scratched the surface, too. We I could know. keep going, couldn't we? All right, so what I would like is for you to wrap this up and tell us is there any one thing you want others to know and then that maybe we didn't cover and then how how they can find you oh (laughs) Um, (laughs) well if anybody is looking for a recipe developer plant-based I would love to be connected with them Um, you can find me I guess well my website is happyapplekitchen.com I'm happyapplevegan on Instagram and I guess, um, again, I, I think just just trusting your own journeys. I, I think I hope what people get out of this is that a plant-rich diet is beautiful and it can inspire creative and creativity and fuel you and just make you feel like this great kind of open connection. And there's this wonderful, compassionate community of people. But that said, like we've been talking about, there is... It's a broad spectrum, like with everything, just mm-hmm. small steps, and the goal doesn't have to be 100%. And it can be, you know, maybe you have a diet that really cannot go that way, and, and that's okay. We can, we can all still love each other and be friends and be compassionate and, and share and, and nourish in, in various ways. I hope, that's, <laughs> I hope that's not too jumbled. No, that was lovely, and that's and that's really you know I think going back to you know we're not going to put we're not going to put you in a box and mm-hmm. and we can be compassionate about this and caring and um, and help each other move forward for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining thank me you, today, Lisa. Wendy. This has been just wonderful, and I have been looking forward to this for a month since we had scheduled this. So I'm so well, glad I'm we were. I'm really looking forward to our next chat. Oh yeah. <laughs> And to getting your ordering your book. Oh well, thank you. And I want to take a look at yours too that you did. So. Oh, I can give you many copies. You can just give them to friends with kids. <laughs> <laughs> They'll enjoy them. There'll be some gardening and some recipes, and it's it's fun. So. Oh nice. Yes, I will make sure that when I make it up your way, mm-hmm. um, I will drop I will drop them off. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's very generous of you. Well, thank you again for joining me. And with that, I think think it's a wrap so that's a wrap for today we have so enjoyed you being with us i hope you learned something new got some inspiration and you are ready to move forward with your own new season remember we are living life at any age take some time to visit the other social media sites give us some feedback shoot me an email on facebook and remember until then stay safe and keep on living cheers cheers